So, um, hello everybody. Uh, I will talk about a project I worked on uh, for um, Luxembourg. Um, and I will talk about uh, the combination between OpenLayers, SenseAttach, and PhoneGap. So, here's the, the context of um, the, the project. Uh, we, didn't, we needed um, a mobile applications uh, with offline support. Um, considering that there was already a desktop application existing. So here's how um, the, the desktop application uh, look. Uh, you, you see that there are a lot of features. It's a data portal with a, a lot of layers. Um, user can, can choose what, what he wants uh, to, to display on the map. Um, and we have uh, a catalog. You can choose layers. Uh, you can change uh, the opacity of the layer, uh, and so on. We also have uh, the possibility to authenticate, and users can create uh, their own maps. Uh, they can uh, add points, lines, or polygons, and um, style style everything. So here is the the context of the, uh, the 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 project and the customer, the Luxembourg, uh, asked us to develop a mobile application with the following features. Uh, they wanted a navigable and queryable map with best layers um, and also a lot of overlay layers. They also wanted to to have location search for uh, users to, to know where they are on the map. And they wanted also offline support so that users, when they go uh, on the field, they can uh, still show the maps uh, on their mobile, even if the internet or uh, um, connectivity is uh, bad. We also need language support because uh, there are many uh, there are different languages uh, spoken uh, in Luxembourg, and uh, they wanted us to to be able to support um, devices on Android or iOS. Uh, they also wanted to to be able to share data and to uh, to be able to add um, points with uh, with um, pictures uh, on the map. Um, first, uh, what we did uh, is. Um, uh, we have done mockups so that we, we are sure that we will be able to put all those features uh, in a single application. Uh, so it, it took a long time, but it was, uh, it was really worth. Um, here we have only half of the different screens uh, we, we mocked up. Uh, here are some mockups about the different views. So you can see that uh, you have the map on the, on the first and then the layers, overlay, overlay layers selection uh, with a, a search, uh, search field uh, because we have a lot of layers. And uh, the, the last one uh, shows how we imagined uh, the offline download. Um, so uh, the, um, the main part of the, the application was the, the offline support and uh, for that, we uh, had to choose how to store uh, the, the tiles on the mobile. So there were uh, many options, uh, several options. Uh, the first one was local storage uh, using HTML5, but it's really too limited, um, usually to five megabytes, uh, which represents uh, about 40 layers. Uh, 40 tiles, sorry. Um, so it doesn't suit the needs. And then um, it, it was obvious that we needed something um, at a lower level. So we needed to, to use PhoneGap um, to be able to uh, access the, the file system. Um, and then we had to choose if we wanted to store the tiles as files or in a database. So we tried to compare 
um, the different the the two the two um, different options, and um, we tried to do benchmarks, but it was not easy to do um, because we had to choose the size of the image itself. Um, we had to um, uh, to to do benchmarks uh, between the different devices, which is also difficult, and. Uh, it was difficult also to um, to determine how much uh, the network latency uh, uh, is uh, responsible for the for the performance. Um, but in the end, um, it looked that uh, storing uh, ties as files was better than uh, using a database. Um, and even more, at the time we did the development, um, in PhoneGap, if we wanted to use a database, we needed a plugin. Uh, this is not uh, the case uh, anymore, so maybe we should reconsider uh, that point. So we chose um, to, to store the, the data as files directly. And here's how we have to do it uh, in PhoneGap. Um, so we request a file system and then we have a callback. Uh, we then have to uh, choose the, um, uh, create the directory in which we want to, to store the ties and then we have a new callback. Um, it's a bit painful but when it's done um, it, it works well. Uh, here's how we download uh, the file. So we, we use what is called a file transfer um, and we call the download uh, method on this uh, on this object. I'm sorry for those who don't know uh, JavaScript. Um, and then here we also have a, a callback um, we, in which we can uh, do uh, things like update the, the counter to know um, if the download is complete. Uh, here's how the, um, the file names look like. Um, yeah, and here's the um, a screenshot of the um, the final uh, view um, in which we can see the the download progress. Um, so I will show you now how we did uh, the integration with Apple Layers. Here's the code. Um, we we relied on the already existing. Um, uh, class which is XYZ um, and we extended um, and we are using a specific method here uh, which can do asynchronized um, calls because of the the system of phone gap using a lot of callbacks we, we had to use this uh, um, this kind of thing so uh, here's how we uh, we access the the data, the ties when when we want to show them on the on the map. Uh, you first download the the ties and then you use this uh, this kind of layer to show it on on Apple layers. Uh, about performance, uh, it was a big issue, and uh, we have two different things to consider. Uh, first, um, the, um, um, the the performance uh, of the display. When you, when you want to uh, to pan a map uh, on a mobile phone, you you cannot have uh, many many layers. Um, <laughs> sorry for that. Tweet. <laughs> you can have many many layers. If if you have more than five or six layers. Uh, Panning the map is really painful, so we we try to um, to have uh, as less uh, layers as possible, and we used um, map proxy to merge uh, layers on the fly, um, both when we you are um, online or offline. So here's there's a lot of <laughs> uh, there's a lot of slides missing. I don't know why. Um, I'm sorry. I wanted to show. Um, I'm 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I was not up to date. So um, you have here a base layer and two other layers. And when we, we download them uh, to show them uh, offline, uh, we are calling a map proxy to, to merge uh, tiles so that we don't we don't have to uh, to download too much tiles and then and also to to have a um, panning uh, which is good. Um, now I, I want to talk about um, the the advantages and um, disadvantages of using the open layers, um, SenchaTouch and PhoneGap uh, stack. About SenchaTouch uh, ST here, um, it has, I think, a nice uh, looking uh, theme, uh, like buttons, uh, views, and so on. Uh, it's, it's a nice point for SenchaTouch. Um, developing a user interface can be fast when you're um, when you know uh, Sencha Touch well, and it also has uh, a strong um, model view controller architecture. Um, also, open layers uh, is, I think, powerful and extensible. Um, the um, asynchronous uh, layers was easy to do with, uh, with open layers. Um, but Sencha Touch is intrusive um, about event management, and we had much trouble with it. Uh, also, SenchaTouch has um, obvious transition um, performance issues. Uh, it supports um, not every, every buzzer. Um, it's, it's kind of changing, but it's still uh, limited. PhoneGap, um, it's great to, to build different uh, applications for different uh, kind of devices. But it's not straightforward. You have to to uh, to do uh, a lot of uh, work uh, so that it works well. And uh, also, when you uh, use this stack, it's difficult to to debug because of the different devices, and um, and uh, and because uh, it might be slow in the different simulators. Um, so this is these are uh, general considerations. Um, if uh, if you want a demo, maybe after um, um, Bart uh, says what is what he wants. <laughs> so thanks uh, very much, uh, Pierre. While uh, Bart is uh, setting up, I have to introduce Bart even. Um, so these are actually two, two talks within a single session, and we take the questions at the end of the next speaker. And most of you will know the next speaker. It's my uh, fellow countryman, uh, Bart van der Einde. And Bart is very knowledgeable on open uh, geospatial. Um, I would say his knowledge is boundless. Um, he, uh, he, he used to work for, uh, in, the, in the Netherlands with the OpenGeo group, then he moved to OpenGeo, now called Boundless. And he involved also lots of his time in OSGeo, and he's now also a member of the board. So Bart will, uh, and he's uh, working a lot with uh, all these JavaScript uh, libraries and also in mobile, and he will learn us what he has uh, done. So, Thanks, Jus. take it away, Mark. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about um, mobile application development with open layers and Sensha Touch. We didn't use uh, PhoneGap. So my name is Bart and I'm from Boundless. So the application I had to build was, um, it's called an enforcement application. It's developed for the city of San Francisco for the um, what is it called, the Municipal Transportation Agency. And it's, uh, it uses a system of parking sensors in the streets and a big Oracle data warehouse that gets all the, um, the sensor information. And then we put GeoServer on top of that with WMS. 
and we also had to do transactions to the underlying tables. And uh, the purpose of the application is to assist the parking citation officer to find places where people didn't pay their uh, parking tickets. So it's a bit of a dodgy application to develop. <laughs> so here you can see um, the application. It's, it's just one page. It's, it's pretty simple in that way. Um, so people select actually like a feature on the map where they want to inspect um, if, if the vehicle didn't pay, the owner of the vehicle didn't pay. But of course, that could also be um, a disabled person who parked there. So then on the right side of the screen, they can update the status, you know, like somebody had some kind of other permit, so it's okay. And then we will update the underlying database so that they don't go and visit that uh, position again. So the technology we used was OpenLayers 2, um, something after the 2.12 release. We used Sensor Touch version 2. We did use uh, Mark's GeoX mobile uh, library. And we had to develop for, we started development on Android 3.2, which later got an upgrade to 4.03, which was quite a bit of an improvement. The Android 3 was quite frustrating to develop against. Um, since we didn't use PhoneGap and they didn't want the parking citation officer to have like unlimited access to internet, so we had to put a wrapper around the application so that they could easily turn off internet access in the browser and just give the application uh, internet access. And the good thing was we only had to develop for one device the Motorola uh, Cyboard 8-inch tablet. So I'm sharing some of my experiences. <laughs> I thought it was, you know, when I did my first estimates for the, this mobile application, I was using my experience in desktop to do estimation, and I, I, I underestimated quite a bit. So be careful when you do that. Um, the disadvantage is we couldn't use Chrome or um, a decent browser, so we had to work with the Android stock browser, and it is very buggy, so be careful. And also, debugging can be really more difficult than on the desktop, especially for the Android stock browser. For Chrome and Safari, it's, it's not so bad, but for, for the stock browser, it takes a lot of time. And one other thing we, we did in this application is don't develop applications like you do on the desktop, you know, with a lot of windows, but make a different work, workflow, a different interaction, which is uh, easier to use. So the main issues we had when developing the map, par the map part of this application was we had a lot of trouble getting the feature selection to be good. So sometimes people had to touch like three or four times to get the feature to be selected on Canvas. So that was quite an issue and we tried actually like three, four different solutions for the feature selection. And another thing is because we had like three layers in the application, the, the, the drag performance was also very problematic in the beginning when we started. So we had to do some patches to open layers to, to get it to be more performant. So I said the feature selection was problematic, so the solutions we actually tried was, we, tr we, we started with Canvas, but it was too buggy on the Android 3 uh, browser. So then we tried to put like an invisible circle around the points and, and have a, a larger hit canvas. But the issue there is that you get overlapping features and you don't, get, you don't always get the right one in that case. We also tried to experiment with a marker renderer, so simple diffs in the map. The feature selection was quite good, but the dragging performance was not so good. So in the end, we, my colleague, Andreas Hochevar, he came up with a, a concept which he called the headless renderer. So I'm going to talk a bit about that in the next slide. And another thing which Andreas developed was in open layers, there's something called a tile manager. 
and it's used for queuing tiles when they are loaded and also to reuse image, uh, image tags which are already in the browser. So that gives a bit of better performance. So the headless renderer is, what we do is we use a WMS layer to render the points. We do get the vector data in through WFS, but we don't display them in the canvas layer. So we just get the data, and using the data, when somebody touches on the screen, we find the nearest point in the data, and on that location we will draw one feature in the canvas renderer. So this was actually for the device, because the Motorola is also, I think, one of the worst devices to work on. <laughs> so that's part of this problem. But in this case, we had the best touch selection and also being able to have a decent panning performance. Sencha Touch. Um, we found out that Android is not so well supported, especially old Android versions. Android 4 was no issue. But they basically say, don't try it on Android 2 or 3, because we won't support it. Um, Sencha command is actually a, a type of SDK to, to make a skeleton application. Um, in the project, I had to upgrade Sencha a few times. And if it breaks, it's really hard to identify the issue, because you just get a stack trace. And you can try things, but it's, it's very hard to find the cause of the stack trace. Um, I did like the MVC part of Sencha Touch to organize the application code. We also found out that the geolocation in Sencha Touch is, is also very buggy, so we didn't get it to work properly, and I think it's broken in the release we had of Sencha Touch. So we had to use the open layers geolocation uh, code. We used the singleton uh, design pattern to store the configuration for the application. And Actually, I'm not sure if I would use it again. I'm undecided. Um, if you want to integrate open layers in Sencha Touch, Sencha Touch applications, they have a, an, an app.json file, which has a resources section. And there you add the open layer, open layer script tag. And you also need to add a script tag in the index HTML page. And of course, you will never use the full build of open layers on mobile. So Make sure you make a build profile of open layers with only the things you need. And I want to show quickly the, um, wait, if it works, I hope. <coughs> if you can see. So this is the app JSON file where you have the resources section and there you put the build file of open layers. And the index HTML file has then the script tag to, um, to open layers. <coughs> because we couldn't really get it to integrate with uh, the micro loader from Sencha Touch. Because your code needs to be structured in certain ways. So that's not really feasible. And this is the open layers build profile which we used, which only includes a few, uh, few classes. Any questions? Well, thanks, Bart. Um, <laughs> thanks for sharing this and uh, also being very honest about uh, well, well, what you're struggling with. And uh, we now have time for questions to the two uh, speakers, Pierre Giraud and Bart van der Einde. Um, we can show the demo. Yeah, if there's no questions, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, you, you mentioned you might not use Send Your Touch again. What right. would you use? Or do, you, do you have an idea of what you would use in your next project? That's a very good question. <laughs> uh, I, st I started a new project with J jQuery. jQuery and Mobile? Yeah, yeah, jQuery Mobile. And it's not, it's not easy uh, to, so it's difficult to, to choose. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's You also mentioned um, both Both have uh, advantages, but both have also disadvantages. <laughs> You also mentioned the fact that uh, PhoneGap was uh, a bit tricky to use on, on multi-platforms. I mean, that, yeah. it strikes me that uh, that's, that's what it's there for, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we, we did a make file to, uh, to ensure that uh, we do um, um, both for Android or iOS. Uh, what, what we found is that uh, PhoneGap is made to, 
to, to build one application for one platform. If you want to do for uh, many platforms, it's not easy. You have to, uh, we, we wrote to make file uh, to do both, but it's not, it's not straightforward with PhoneGap. Okay, thanks. Um, one, one quick question. Isn't there a Birds of a Feather session on this uh, subject? I know there is one on, on GOX, then on the future, mobile? but also on mobile, or is it just for the... I, I don't know about it. Uh, okay, now I thought it, it's a question to you. Organize it. <laughs> well, if, there, if there's interest, I mean, yeah. it's a big issue. I, I'm sorry, th this gentleman over there was first. Uh, did you consider other storage methods than local storage for HTML5? No. For like indexed what? DB? What do you mean? Uh, uh, indexed DB is like another technology for oh, yeah. storing uh, and... Uh, we didn't. No, because I tried it actually and it worked really well. You could also expand it from 5 megabyte up to I think 50. Okay. It's Maybe it like was too... Uh, not too much, uh, not not enough for uh, for our case, I think. Oh, okay, you need more, maybe than yeah. 50, so. Oh. So I was just wondering why you went through the pain, and it is pain, of doing a multi-platform map when you're only supporting one platform. What do you mean, a multi-platform map? So you're using Censure Touch, which is great, but one of the advantages is you could use it on iPhone, you could use it on anything, but right. you were only targeting an Android device, so right. what made you choose that over a native Android app? I think it was a requirement from the client to do HTML5. So did, did you agree with that? In hindsight, probably not. But <laughs> If uh, Chen is quite a lot of the JavaScript, um, it, I guess these projects are not open source projects. No? Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, the, the project I worked on uh, will be open sourced. I, I asked the customer and it will be open sourced um, in the next days or week. Great, thanks. Same for my application also. So we have still time for one question. Is there one question there? I 